everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates. There was a lot of action going on this past weekend, so let's get started. Anthony Alfredo was at Richmond Raceway for the first time. He had to start 29th due to no qualifying and brought home a 31st place finish. Let's check with the driver for a post-race recap. Definitely not a great day today here at Richmond Raceway. We just lacked some raw speed in our MDS Trucking Ford Mustang, along with our teammates. Historically, this isn't one of our best tracks, but we've been trying and working hard. We're gonna do our homework to try to be better next time. Uh, I enjoyed the track, I feel good, but we just uh, weren't able to get the finish we wanted. Definitely tough, but I'm excited to head to Talladega next weekend because anything can happen there. So thank you all for the support, and I'll see you at the next one. Up next for Anthony, Talladega Super Speedway this weekend. Don't miss that race. Sheldon Creed returned to Richmond Raceway for the Toyota Care 250, where he started ninth. Spent most of the race inside the top 15 and was making a charge to the front after sitting comfortably inside the top 10 late in the race. Sheldon was forced to the tail end of the field for a safety violation on a pit stop on lap 198, forcing Creed to battle back through the field in the closing laps of the race to eventually finish 11th. Sheldon currently sets third in points heading to Kansas. Up next, Camping World Truck Series at Kansas Speedway on May 1st, live on FS1. Jesse Love returned to the seat of the number 21 super late model with Wimmer Motorsports at Dells Raceway Park for the Icebreaker 100. Jesse topped the speed charts throughout the weekend and qualified straight into the A main with 42 cars attempting to take the green on Sunday. Jesse started the race from eighth, but was involved in an incident where the field checked up for an accident early in the race, upsetting the setup on his car. Jan Jesse managed to race his way back to fourth on lap 28 he stayed there for the next 30 laps, eventually bringing home a seventh place finish. Up next for Jesse, TC America Series at Circuit of Americas on April 30th through May 2nd. Joey East was at Madera Speedway for a pro late model club race with Nate Clower Motorsports, where he qualified third, won his heat race, and started the feature in third. Unfortunately, Joey was involved in some slight contact with another competitor and had to restart in 11th, but raced his way back to a second place finish. Up next for Joey, Trans Am TA testing today and Arkham Menards East race at Nashville Fairgrounds with DGR on May 8th. Joe Valento was at Ace Speedway in Ellen, North Carolina in preparation for an upcoming Cars Tour race in his DGR late model stock. Joe and the team tested on Thursday and on Friday morning, then he qualified third and finished the 50 lap main event in third. Overall mission accomplished. They gained some valuable seat time and that will pay off when they return on May 7th. Up next for Joe, the Cars Tour, Old North State Nationals at Orange County Speedway this weekend and there's $30,000 on the line for the winner. Cassidy Hines made her first trip to the East Coast where she pulled double duty, making her debut in a late model stock for Lee Falk Racing. The game plan was to run all the laps, get some seat time in this type of car, and that's exactly what she did. On night one at Ellen, North Carolina's Ace Speedway for the 50 lap feature, she qualified fifth and finished fifth. On night two, she made the trip to Tri-County Speedway in Hudson, North Carolina, where she qualified seventh and finished seventh in the 75 lap main event. Up next for Cassidy, SRL Pro Late Models at Stockton 99 Speedway with Nate Clower Motorsports on May 1st. Gavin Graham competed at 417 Speedway in Punta Gora, Florida in his 00 Pro Truck on Saturday night after being rained out at Five Flag Speedway on Friday. Gavin qualified fifth and started the race in third with the Invert, taking the lead early and he led the first 15 laps. 
On lap 27, he got into some antifreeze that was laid down from another competitor's broken radiator and spun out and had to restart 15th. But he drove his way back to a sixth place finish. Up next for Gavin, pro truck double duty this weekend. First at Five Flags on Friday, then to Chris Motorsports Park on Saturday. Carter Whalen was at Metro Atlanta Quarter Midget Association in Brazelton, Georgia for round three of the Dixie Shootout, where he competed in three different classes. Carter finished second in Heavy 160, third in Heavy Honda, and 11th in World Formula. Let's check in with the driver for a quick recap. Hey guys, we just got back from the MAQMA Dixie Shootout. Had a great time, had a lot of fun. We ended up finishing third in the heavy Honda, second in the heavy 160, and after some mechanical issues, we ended up finishing 11th in the heavy world formula. I can't say enough about our sponsors. Huge thank you to the Cox family, the Little Speed Shop, Conquest Strategic Marketing, Mark Tuggle RV, and David Medina Photography. Great job, Carter. Up next for Carter, North Georgia Quarter Midget Association on April 24th. New race face driver Landon Cox was also competing in round three of the Dixie Shootout at North Georgia Quarter Midget Association in the Red Rookie class. Landon won his heat race, was leading the A main when he got turned, but rebounded for a sixth place finish. Up next for Landon, North Georgia Quarter Midget Association on May 8th. Other drivers seeing action this weekend include Connor Mozak, who will be at Sonoma Raceway for the Trans Am TA2 race on Saturday and Sunday. Caden Honeycutt will chase the 30,000 to win in the Old North State National Cars Tour event at Orange County Speedway on Sunday. Bryce Bizantin will return to Wenatchee Valley Super Oval on Sunday in his Jefferson Racing Super Late Model. Jake Bowman will be back in the SRL Pro Late Model at Stockton 99 Speedway on Friday. And Brody Moore will be at Madera Speedway for round three of the 5150 Junior Late Model Series on Saturday. As you can see, racing is back. But that's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you have missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out the Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel. And as always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back with you next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.